This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This lecture is on Chapter 5 of the paper F5 Lecture Notes, uh, which is called Throughput Accounting. And what it relates to, as you'll see when I work for an example, is when um, we're making several products, but where we've got limited resources available and how to decide how best to use them. Now, I'll explain exactly what I mean, obviously, um, with an example, uh, but I must make it clear, although it's called throughput accounting, uh, I'm actually going to do two exercises. The first exercise I'll do is the traditional or the old-fashioned way of dealing with the problem, something called key factor analysis. But then I'll explain what throughput accounting is and how we... Um, the more modern way is to do things slightly differently. So uh, look first of all at example one, uh, which is key factor analysis. Now I'll look at the example with me, then I can explain what the problem is and how traditionally, or the old fashioned way, we approach it. He says Pi PLC manufactures two products, A and B, and you've got there the cost cards. If you just look quickly down A, the selling price is 25 per unit. I haven't written that, but they're all per unit. Uh, materials A, labour 5, other variable costs 7. They've absorbed fixed costs at 3, so the total cost 23, the profit $2. So both these products are um, profitable. Uh, we're told if you jump a line, uh, the maximum demand on my copy, it seems to have gone a bit out of line, so I'm sorry, but it's, it should read 20,000 units of A and 10,000 units of B. Well, they're both profitable. That's the most we could sell. And so if it weren't for one problem, that's what we produce. We produce 20,000 A's and we produce 10,000 B's. But the problem is that both of those products use machine hours, two hours and one hour, and the total hours available are limited to 48,000. And the reason that's a problem, I said a moment ago, uh, that if we can sell 20,000 A's, we'd want to sell 20,000 A's. Uh, we'd want to sell as many B's as we could sell, 10,000. But every A takes two hours to produce, every B takes one hour. And so to produce to meet demand, we'd need, in total, 50,000 hours. Of machine time. And that's the problem, that for some reason there are only 48,000 hours available, and so we can't produce both products in full. And the question is, how many should we produce of A and of B to get our maximum profit, but without using more than the uh, 48,000 machine hours available? Now, at first glance, it may not look to be any problem. Uh, they both make a profit of two dollars, so what does it matter? The reason it uh, matters, though, is because of these fixed costs. Now, think about it in relation to what we did in the first chapter. Where did that three dollars a unit for A and two dollars a unit for B come from? Presumably they absorb the fixed costs, whether they use traditional absorption or whether they use activity base, I don't care. But whatever the total fixed costs are, the total fixed costs are going to stay the same by definition, however many we end up producing of A and of B. And what's going to change? As you sell more or less A's, you'll get more or less revenue. As you sell more or less A's, you'll get more or less variable costs. It's the revenue, the variable costs, that will change. 
the total fixed cost won't change at all. And so, before we ever start doing anything, we don't look at the uh, profit per unit, we look at the contribution. Now, contribution is a term you should be aware of, but to make sure, because it can occur in lots of places in later chapters, uh, what the contribution per unit is, it, it can be expressed in two ways. They both mean the same. It, uh, it's either the sales minus the variable costs, Sorry, before I show you the other way of writing it, let's check for A. For A, the selling price is 25. The total of the variable costs is 8, 13, 20. And so, 20, uh, 25 less 20, A generates a contribution of $5 per unit. And similarly, B, selling price 28. Va um, the variable costs, materials, labour, and other variable is 24. So it's generating $4 per unit. So sales less variable costs, or the alternative, which should be very obvious, it's the profit before any fixed costs. Which ends up exactly the same. Uh, a has a, a final profit of two dollars, but the fixed costs were three per unit. So before fixed costs, two plus three is five. And similarly, B has a profit of two, but the fixed costs were two, so the contribution is four. So again, it's the contribution that's going to vary as we make more or less A's and B's. Total fixed costs won't change whatever happens. And again, remember what we're trying to do is how many should we make of each of them? And it looks as though A is the better one at $5 a unit. But there's a problem. Look at the machine hours. Every A takes two hours. Every B only takes one hour. So surely, if I'm two hours available, well, I can either make one A and get $5, or I with two hours, I can make two Bs and make eight dollars. Well, although there's several ways you can arrive at the same conclusion, the standard way of deciding which is the better of the two, or three, or four, however many there are, we look at the contribution per unit, uh, we look at the machine hours per unit, A is two, B is one, and to see what the better use of these hours is, we look at the contribution per machine hour. It takes two hours to make an A and earn five dollars, so for every hour we use making A, it generates two dollar fifty. Whereas B, one hour to generate four dollars, Every hour generates four dollars. So where's the best use of our limited hours? B is best at a dollar per hour, at uh, four dollars an hour. Uh, a is second best. And I've kept this short, but there's no reason why there shouldn't be three, four, five products. Wouldn't be any harder, it just makes it to take a few minutes longer. But you'd rank them in order of the contribution per machine hour. Now we can decide what we're going to produce. We know that B is best, so we'll produce as many Bs as we can. But remember, there's no point producing more than we can sell. The demand is 10,000, we'll produce 10,000 Bs. And how many hours does that take up? Well, at one hour per unit, we've used up 10,000 hours. How many hours have we got in total? We've got 48,000. So how many hours have we got left? 
If you've used 10,000 making B, uh, well, the balance left is 38,000. Well, again, there's no point in making more Bs. So we use the remaining hours to make A. And how many can we make? Well, remember, each takes two hours. So with 38,000 divided by two hours, we can make, can I do that? Yes, 19,000 units. And so there is the first bit of uh, the question. It says, what's the optimum production plan? Well, there it is. We'll uh, produce 19,000 A's, 10,000 B's. Now, probably, that will be where it finishes. We've done it. All right, you can make it longer by adding more products. This one does carry on and say, what is the maximum profit? Well, let's look first of all at the contribution. Uh, we're making 19,000 A's, 10,000 B's. And how much contribution are we earning per unit? Per unit, A gives $5 and B gives 4. So 95, 40, 135. So there is the maximum contribution that we can earn. The profit, though, we're going to have to subtract the fixed costs. Now here, uh, listen to me very carefully. If this is asked in the exam, um, probably you'd be told what the total fixed costs were. And if I told you, for example, fixed costs are 100,000 in total, and to get the profit, you simply subtract 100,000. If they don't tell you, which is unlikely, but if they don't tell you, then we make an assumption. We assume that the original costings were done before knowing about the limited hours. And what does that mean? You see, if they'd done their costings and didn't know we were going to have 48,000 hours uh, available, we thought we could have as many as we wanted. We said at the beginning, we'd produce as many we could, as we could sell. We'd uh, produce to equal demand. Now think about that. On the basis of what I've written, it means when we did our costings in the first place and absorbed our fixed costs, we thought we were going to produce 20,000 A's and 10,000 B's. And on that basis, we absorbed $3 a unit, $2 a unit. And so what must it have been in total? We thought we were making 20,000 A's and the fixed costs would be we arrived at $3 a unit, we thought we'd make 10,000 Bs, uh, and the fixed costs were $2 a unit. So we must have expected that the total fixed costs would be 80,000. Now clearly, we don't end up making 20 of A and uh, 10 of B, we only make 19 and 10. But as I said earlier, and as I'm no, I'm repeating. If the fixed costs were estimated to be 80 in total, they'll stay at 80. Fixed costs are fixed, they'll stay at 80 even if we do produce less. And so now I can work out the profit. The profit 135 less 80. There is the maximum profit. And there we are. Now again, uh, that last bit, if you need to re-listen, do re-listen. It's easy to wind back the lecture. 
<coughs> but I read any question carefully. What I've done that probably won't be relevant. Uh, you'll probably be told what the total fixed costs are, uh, or just as for the production schedule, in which case the fixed costs themselves are irrelevant. But do appreciate why we did our workings based on contribution. I'm not going to repeat it, but contribution is a, a vital um, term in the exam. All right, now that's conventional key factor analysis. However, although we're going to have a, a break before we do the next bit, I'm going to explain in the next part of the lecture why for many businesses these days, a, 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 a similar approach, but different, which sounds a bit ridiculous, um, is perhaps better, something called throughput accounting. So I'll have a break and then I'll carry on and um, explain what throughput accounting is. And again, the best way of showing this by example, I'll do exactly the same example, but when I've told you what we assume is in throughput accounting, then, well, I think we should find it very easy. But that will be in the next lecture.